G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is draft season, it's finally upon us. And uh, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a El Fantomo El Drafto, which is a phrase that I picked up in Barcelona. Essentially going to be doing my own mock draft on the top 20 of this year's upcoming draft. It's not the only draft I'm gonna have a, an attempt at doing uh, because there's so much gonna change in between now and late November. So I like to do a few of these, but I thought I'd get the ball rolling with an early look at the top 20. And maybe later on I'll do a, a longer draft or I usually do one with Bush and I taking turns picking as well. You would have seen the other day, I made a video with Drews about the best West Australian prospects, but this video is gonna be opening up to the entire draft pool and I'm going to have a crack at the top 20 selections, although it's tough to really lock it in as a prediction because as I said, so much is going to change. So I'm going to roll through the first 20 picks, uh, starting uh, with GWS have pick one. And I think, you know, after an academy bid, they're also going to be the last pick in this particular draft with uh, what will become pick 20. Before I get into it, guys, please acknowledge our sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, for being such wonderful sponsors and also having some great male grooming products. The Lawn Mole 4.0 is an elite body hair trimmer and to be crass a ball hair trimmer it's got everything you need they've got a variety of products now shampoos conditioners deodorants ball wipes ball deodorants it's everything so go check out their website if you're looking to upgrade your manscaping routine and you can get 20% off using the code truefooty20 at checkout that's 20% off and you get free shipping but we'll put a bit of a pin in the scrotum talk at least for now I'm sure it will emerge somewhere later in this video and I'm going to get rolling with my top 20 selections in this upcoming draft so with pick one we have the GW US Giants, who of course traded for this pick from North Melbourne, and uh, I'm sort of tossing up whether they're going to bid for Will Ashcroft or they're just going to take the pick outright. The only real benefit to them bidding on it is it just makes Brisbane pay a higher price, and it's a 50 50 call. But I'm going to say the Giants lock in their own number one pick and take Aaron Cadman, the 195 centimeter key forward from Vic Country. This one's kind of t telegraphed, everyone seems to know that that's who they're going to pick. They specifically traded up to get a pick, uh, presumably for a key forward, the best key forward in the draft. Aaron Cadman. Uh, he shot up due to the GWS link. You could probably argue the case. If it wasn't GWS picking first, if it was North Melbourne, they'd probably go someone else. But regardless, GWS get their man. They need a Cameron replacement, and uh, there's a little bit of doubt over other prospects in this range. Sheasel, Wardlaw, Sardis, other number one prospects. Obviously, Ashcroft is not in the open pool, uh, but all of those have question marks over homesickness. So GWS get their man in Cadman. If it doesn't happen at pick one, it'll happen at pick two. North Melbourne will bid on Will Ashcroft, and that will be matched by the Brisbane Lions. So pick two is Will Ashcroft to the Brisbane Lions, son of Marcus Ashcroft, who's a uh, run all day sort of on baller, considered the best prospect in the drafts. So the kid literally has the ball on a string. He averaged 33 touches in the championships. And uh, I think he notched up a game where he had 51 touches in a NAB League game as well. So the guy is pretty much ready to go. It'll be tough cracking into the Brisbane midfield early days, but he is a ready-made prospect and Brisbane will be very happy with that. North Melbourne then double up with picks three and four. And in pick three, I've got them taking George Wardlaw, 182 centimeter midfielder from Victoria. He's a stoppage specialist, wins the ball at ease in terms of a contested situation, really good distributor by hand and uh, pretty good skills by foot as well. He's a great two-way mid as well, so he runs back defensively, good tackler as well, which adds a bit of a point of difference to some other midfielders. He kind of replaces Horn Francis as being a genuine on-baller, but we know Horn Francis kind of played forward as well, which leads me to pick four, where I have them taking Harry Sheasel, who I think is honestly one of the best, most tantalizing prospects in this year's draft. He's kind of like a playmaking dynamic forward, Compared to Stevie J with the way he can sort of turn half chances into goal opportunities, elite goal sense, really one-touch player. Can play in the midfield, won plenty of ball in the midfield as well, but I imagine he starts his career as a uh, as a forward who will generally hit the scoreboard pretty early. It is rumoured that North Melbourne have already decided on Wardlaw and Sheasel. It's also rumoured that they've told the boys this. Whether or not that's true or not, I think these are the best available selections for North Melbourne. At pick five, this is the pick for Essendon that I think will shape the top 10. They've been long linked to Sardis as the best available prospect. However, there's also kind of rumors that they're looking at Elijah Hewitt from Western Australia and Mateus Philippou. I'm gonna go with who I'd probably pick in this scenario without any real inside knowledge. And I'm gonna say they take Matthias Philippou from South Australia. He's 189 centimeter, taller midfielder, uh, but who genuinely plays forward as well. 
well. I don't really have any idea who they're going to take this far out, but I do think that Philippou adds a real point of difference. He's compared to a Bontempelli type, a guy who can play forward as a sort of undersized key forward a little bit, and then also play through the midfield as well. Hits the scoreboard, wins plenty of the football. He's, uh, I think he's born in the last week of the year too, so there's some upside with development. I think any club who gets Philippou, uh, that there's kind of a bargain. So Essendon has got a, uh, a winner here in my opinion. Pick six, the Gold Coast Suns. This is another tricky one as well. And um, it's they've been rumored to take, you know, guys like Ruben Jinby or Oliver Hollands. The link to Hollands is pretty clear. His brother, Elijah Hollands, plays for the Gold Coast Suns, so maybe they're looking at picking up him to help retention. But I'm going to go with the rumor meal and say that Ruben Jinby makes his way to the Gold Coast Suns. He's a West Australian former defender. He sort of developed into a midfielder this year, but he's a very tall and powerful and explosive type midfielder as well. So kind of a selection based on upside. They're probably ignoring some of the Victorian talents that may be considered flight risks home. But either way, Jinbi looks like a pretty high upside prospect, only became a midfielder this year and was the MVP for WA in their championship team. Pick seven, I've got the Hawks pulling the trigger on Cameron McKenzie. This one was another tricky one to isolate exactly who they're going to pick because I don't think most really thought that Sardis would be available for them at this point in the draft, but I'm still going to go with McKenzie. He's a really balanced, taller midfielder. They've been sort of linked to him as well, uh, but I really like the way this guy plays. He wins his own ball and uh, he's got really good speed and agility and uses the ball well. So very well-rounded. I feel like he can play quite early and the Hawks are likely to go best available on a midfielder. So Cam McKenzie to the Hawks. Pick eight, I've got Geelong taking Jai Clark, the local prospect from the Geelong Falcons. He's a, a smaller 181 centimeter midfielder, but he's a contested ball and really good overhead for a guy of his smaller stature. It's probably a little bit lazy to link him to Geelong because he's from the Geelong Falcons, but I do feel like this kid is a bit of a sure thing to play 200 games. I don't know. He just seems to have that safe bet title over him. Obviously, Geelong have lost Joel Selwood. Yes, they recruited Tanner Bruin. Then they lost Cooper Stevens as well. So I think a midfielder uh, is probably on the cards for them. If they don't take someone like Buzzlinger, I think Jai Clark is pretty close to best available. Then at pick nine, we've got the West Coast Eagles who are widely tipped to go for a local WA talent. I'm not convinced by this theory. And I think they're going to go with Oliver Hollands, uh, the player that I linked to Gold Coast earlier in this video. I'm going to say they pull the trigger on him. He's a 182 centimeter balanced midfielder, mostly as an outside mid and a, and a wingman, but he can win his own ball as well. And he pushes back onto the halfback flank as well. He's got pretty good pace and skills, but what I think will stand out for him is his defensive game. He runs back just as hard defensively and tackles well, uh, which is, I think, something the Eagles lack. So I don't think they're necessarily going to just pick the West, West Australian talent. I think Holland seems like a West Coast pick to me. So so that's why I've gone for it. At pick 10, St. Kilda pounce on the slider in Elijah Sardis. Uh, this kid is considered by, you know, on average, a top five talent. But if he slides past Essen and pick five, considering as well that he's a bit of a go-home risk, they think there's a couple of non-Victorian sides uh, peaking in that range. I think there's a good chance if he gets past Hawthorne and Geelong that, uh, that Sardis gets picked up by St. Kilda. He's 186 centimeters, really good outside wingman type. Who's, they say he can play on ball as well as a genuine inside mid, but either way, uh, he's a high production outside mid with really good skills. Averaged 34 touches in the NAB league this year, so St. Kilda get a damaging wingman with pick 10. At pick 11, I've got the Blues taking a bit of a bolter, in my opinion, and there's two reasons for this. I'll explain who it is first. It's Ollie Hotton, 182 centimeter forward midfielder. There's two reasons I got the Blues pouncing on a bolter like this. One, I'm just a big fan of Hotton. I think he's a good chance to go earlier than people expect, based on my, you know, uninformed personal opinion. And secondly, I think Carlton do tend to buck the trend with their selections, sometimes with success and sometimes not so. But either way, I think Hotton's a beauty. He's uh, kind of like a smaller forward who actually plays a bit taller than he actually is as a lead up forward. He's really good overhead, even though he's only 182 centimeters, a little bit like Mark Lacra back in the day. He's primarily a forward, but has some midfield utility, can play behind the ball as well because he uses the ball really well. And I just do think he has a bit of a point of difference to what Carlton already have. They don't have too many glaring deficiencies. They've invested in their midfield. The key position players are really good. It's about padding it out with some of these medium types. And I think Hotton fits the bill. At pick 12, I've got the Western Bulldogs selecting uh, what they will probably perceive as the best key defender in the draft. On average, people seem to be rating Buzzlinger higher, but I think I'm going to go with the Bulldogs taking Lewis Hayes, brother of Sam, as a 199 centimeter key defender. This one is possibly a bit 
controversial or at least contentious because the Bulldogs may have some other options as key defender prospects. So obviously they recruited Liam Jones as a key defender, but given his age, they might look at a longer term option. They're still trying to optimize how to play, you know, Sam Darcy and Aaron Norton. Do one of those go back because they seem to have quite a few key forwards. Either way, I still think they might look at a longer term key defensive prospect and Lewis Hayes fits the bill. As I said, some people consider him behind Buzzlinger, but I've just got a feeling about this one. I think Hayes goes a little bit earlier than he's currently projected and I think the Bulldogs fit the bill. So let me know in the comments what you think about that one. West Coast then have their second pick with pick 13 in this draft and I'm going to go for the local tall in Jed Buzzlinger. Now I think fans will not really like that. I think we're sort of tipped to look at some genuine midfielders, but having taken Hollands with the first pick, I think we go the best available player in Jed Buzzlinger. He's a tall, intercepting, sort of rangy, key position prospect, really high quality interceptor, and uh, his kicking off the halfback as well is a bit of an offensive feature as well. So while as an Eagles fan, I probably would love a, an extra midfielder with this selection, I have a feeling that Buzzlinger will be too attractive for pick 13. I think he's a good value proposition, and the Eagles will take him with pick 13. Pick 14, we have the Melbourne Footy Club, and I've got them taking Matthew Jefferson, 195 centimeter key forward prospect. Obviously, they traded out Sam Wiedemann to Essendon this offseason as well, and given they're currently contending, they've sort of got the luxury now of investing in a project player who's probably a couple of years away from really cracking into the best 22. He's a lead-up and mark type key forward, and uh, considered, as far as I can tell, the second best key forward talent behind Cadman in the draft, so I think Melbourne will pull the trigger on Jefferson. At pick 15, we've got the Sydney Swans, and I've got them taking Bailey Humphrey, who's a 186-centimeter forward who rolls through the midfielder, and long term probably projects as an impact midfielder. Now there's a little bit of talk that the Swans are actually trying to trade up in this year's draft to secure Bailey Humphrey, which suggests to me that I've probably got him going too late in this draft. But either way, I found it a little bit hard to attribute him to a particular club. So I've got him ending up at Sydney anyway. So if they trade for him on draft night, they kind of got it right anyway. He's a big body, explosive, and at times erratic sort of midfielder forward who, with his ball use, can let you down a few times, but he's really high potential, really high impact when he's on song, and at the very least, I think he'll add a point of difference to any club, let alone Sydney, and I think he's a little bit different from the young midfield brigade they've got there, so the Swans take the punt on Bailey Humphrey. Then you've got the Giants with pick 16, their second selection of the draft. I've got them reaching perhaps a little bit for the ruck prospect in Harry Barnett, who stands at 202 centimetres. It's a little bit of a reach, but I think the Giants are kind of replenishing their entire list. And I still think they probably want a good long-term ruck prospect. And Barnett is the best available ruck in this year's draft. He's got pretty strong hands. He can sort of play forward as well. But I think his running capacity, it's pretty comparable to some of the midfielders at the combine as well. So you've got a pretty athletic ruck slash key forward prospect. And the Giants will be happy to reach a little bit, knowing they've got a couple of more picks up their sleeve. At pick 17, the Pies enter the draft. And I've got them taking Western Australia's Elijah Hewitt, who stands at 185 centimetres, 85 kilos, pretty big bodied athletic sort of midfielder compared to Christian Petrarca. He slid a little bit in calculations this year. I think he had a bit of an up and down season on the field, and I think that COVID was partly to blame for that. I think it affected him. I'm not too sure, but either way, I think this is a very good value pickup for the Magpies. Having recruited a couple of talls in Frampton and McStay in this trade period, I think they're in a position to take best available and go for a midfielder, and I think Hewitt is definitely best available. The Swans re-enter the draft at what is currently pick 18, and uh, to complement Bailey Humphrey with their first pick. I've got them taking Max Grzewski, who is a 193 centimeter sort of utility who plays both as a key defender and can play forward as a forward target as well. They've taken plenty of midfielders over the years, so they'll sort of offset that by taking a taller prospect with this pick. He can play at either end, as I said. Got really strong hands, bit of a playmaker, and I think that will suit the Swans list quite nicely. Now, the Giants return for the final two picks of this video, and at pick 19, I've got them taking a pure midfielder. So they've got Cadman and Barnett so far. They lost a few midfielders this year, so they're keen to pick a pure midfielder up. And I've got them taking Henry Hustwaite, who stands at 195 centimetres, a pretty unique midfielder in this draft pool. He's pretty good at the contested stuff, but what's really good about Hustwaite is he's a very composed player, always seems to have time, uses the ball pretty well, and he's versatile as well, can play at any flank. He's a rapid improver, and being from Vic Country as well, I kind of considered that Vic Country prospects are less of a flight risk to a club like the Giants, so they'll pick him up here. With the Giants' fourth pick and final pick of this video, I've got them securing West 
Western Australia's Darcy Jones, who stands at 175 centimetres and is primarily a midfielder, but I imagine he projects as a high half forward at the next level. This one is a little bit of uh, goss, more so than me ranking him here. A little bit of a rumour existing that the Giants are keen to pick up Darcy Jones, and I think it will have to be this pick if they do want to add him to their list. Uh, he's a smaller midfielder. He's got great agility. He's a genuine playmaker, uses the ball well. Uh, he racked up 44 touches earlier in the year uh, playing Colts for the Swan District Footy Club. And so he's got really good production, impacts well. I think he does project as a forward at the next level, but at the very least, he's a versatile playmaker type. And I think the Giants will have to take him here and thus they will. All right, guys, that is my crack at the top 20 of this year's upcoming draft. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There will be more draft content coming thick and fast. I've got a couple of ideas for videos as well, and I'll probably do uh, at least one West Coast centric video as well because this is a very important draft for my boys. So hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.